You definitely want to those. You want to get those. Whoa, whoa! Are you serious? Asteroid. Oh my God. Asteroids coming down at me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. We're going to get killed by an asteroid. No, 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 no. Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here. And well, I mean, technically, Sean Murray still here. And the weekend event is here. And I thought, well, what better time to have Sean Murray do anything than the weekend event? So if you didn't know, in No Man's Sky, every Friday, and it depends on where you're at, what time it is, it is Friday afternoon for me. We will get the weekend event. You can tell the weekend event is here because you have that cool, like, uh, greenish uh, cube on top of the Nexus cube. That means the weekend event is here. And we have almost 60 hours left, and it's Restless Ancestors Unearth Ancient Bones. All right. So we're going to be going and getting, un you know, ancient bones. We're going to be digging up some bones for the weekend event. And as always, I try to hang around a little bit because... It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened in the past couple of months, but late last year, we started getting storylines for the weekend event and it kind of tapered off. I think they're, I hope they come back, but they haven't yet and they still haven't yet. So usually they would tell you, hey, go talk to this other traveler on the space anomaly. They'll give you some background into the story of what's going on in the weekend event. We have not had that happen in a while, so I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting, and we're still waiting for the Expedition Part 3 to start. I think that, well, the third Expedition, I should say, not Part 3, but the third Expedition to start. We're still waiting on that, so Sean, anytime you want to help us out here, give us an Expedition, that would be great. I would love it. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, I love No Man's Sky, but the Prisms update really, it just added more flash and visual appeal. It didn't add very much... You know, in the way of gameplay, it added more in the visual aspect of it. All right, let me stop getting these asteroids, and we're going to head on over to the bone-rich planet right over here. And so everyone's going to be coming here. Yeah, see, it's already been found by someone else in the, in the community. So that's what weekend events are. Everyone goes to the same planet, and we all get the same mission. In this case, we are going there to dig up bones, and usually they, they say, hey... Either, you know, you get a specific number of bones, or they tell you you have to get a, a rarity. You have to get a yellow, really rare, legendary bone. And I like the number of bones more, because if they tell you, oh, you have to go get five bones, that's easy to do. If they say, hey, you need to get a legendary bone, holy, you, know, you never know. It could be five. It could be 200 bones you have to dig up before you get a legendary one. And so hopefully it is a number of bones, not a specific rarity of bones. Oh, look at this storm. Oh yeah. This is an extreme planet for sure. Lightning like that doesn't happen on normal storms. This is an extreme storm. Let's land here. Oh yeah, and you can see from the uh, the uh, storm crystals, you see those glowing crystals that kind of crackle with electricity? That means this is an extreme planet. Woo, okay, so we are looking for bones. We have a we have a burial site there, but it doesn't want us to find that one. It wants us to go to this one. Okay, collect ancient bones. We have to collect 12, so that's not so bad. I can do 12, but Sean Murray can do 12 as well. So 12 is not bad, because usually, oh, look at They have the big flying beetles if you want to use those. But yeah, a number of 12 is not bad, because usually there'll be like two or three bones next to each other anyway. So you'll just have to go to a few sites. You can also pick up some storm crystals while you're here. And it's always a good idea to have hazard protection. Oh yeah, and by the way, we could go into the fact of, uh, oh wait, where'd my bone go? Where's my bone at? Okay, this is the bone we're supposed to be going for. Why wasn't it not high? I thought I could have sworn I highlighted it. Anyway, this is where I would show you, let me show you this. My uh, toxicity levels are pretty good, right? You see my, my toxicity levels are slowly going down. But the reason why they're going down very slowly is because I have my radi- or my toxic suppressor. So you have an up, uh, upgrade and it just gives me higher toxic resistance. This is what you really want. You want one of these. And also I have my black market toxic resistance upgrades right here. 
So they will give me a small percentage upgrade. So what this does is, like normally if it would take you two minutes for your uh, toxic upgrade to diminish your hazard protection, if it would give you two minutes normally, once you pop this thing on, it'll give you plus 21% on top of that. So 21% of two minutes, that's what, 10% of 60 seconds is six seconds. It would give you an extra 12 seconds of uh, time for your hazard protection. So you definitely want to those. You want to get those. Whoa, whoa! Are you serious? Asteroid! Oh my God! Asteroids coming down at me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God! We're gonna get killed by an asteroid. No, 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 no! Look at that! We literally have a meteor shower. Oh God! <laughs> this is not gonna be good. We're gonna get crushed. Or melted by the toxicity. Oh god! Go, just keep going. Where's my bone? Where's my bone? Oh, right over here. Get down here, quick! I don't even know what I'm doing. Get down, dig, 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 dig. Get in there. Dig down into the big hole. Get down in here. We have a rare one. Okay, good. Whoo! Now, I don't see any bones around here. Great. Now, the other thing is, they might change it because of this specific mission. They might have made- Hello Games might have gone through and made sure that these sites are all just one each. Which is not cool. But we'll see with the next one, if I don't get killed by a meteor. Holy cow, meteor shower right after a storm. Dude, this planet is not messing around. That's it? Yeah, I don't see any other bones. Usually you'll, you'll see little yellow symbols, but nope. Okay, so we're over there. Let's get over here. Now, the other thing I, I kind of like, I kind of hate, is that you have your target sweeper. And so they're specifically showing you burial sites you have to go to. Um, that kind of, it's good and it's bad. It's good because you don't have to find it on your own. Sometimes it's harder to find bone burial sites on your own, but it's bad because they're pointing you towards specific ones, which means they can choose if they're a big burial site or not. And so if they decide, nah, we don't really want to give you a good one. Okay, so this one looks like it has a couple of them next to each other. Yeah, okay, good. But yeah, so it could be that they just marked them and said, no. These are all the burial sites that only have one bone in them, and you're gonna have to go to 12 different burial sites. Oh, God. I hope that's not the case. We're gonna find out, though. Later that same evening. So I think I've gotten to the last burial site. I think there are multiple. Yeah, there are two in this one. So the most I have found is two in a bundle, and they used to... I mean, I remember getting, like, three or four in a, in a group. But man, they wanted to make sure you worked at it. So definitely, this would be one that is good for multiplayer. If you're doing co-op, this mission will be a piece of cake. Other than that, holy cow. So I got what I needed. Now, I did find one legendary, one yellow, worth a million bucks. I love it. But we have to turn him in, so we have to locate his contact. Where is he at? All right, and I'm not walking back. Where's my, uh, where's my ship at? My ship is 12 minutes away. I've been walking for a while. It's probably been, looking at my timer, it's been about 10 minutes of me walking around in circles, finding bones everywhere. So I'm not walking all the way back to my ship. I'm just going to fly over there after I call him in. So, yeah, we're going to fly back, and now we just have to turn in. And I believe they only make you turn in some of the bones. That way you can turn in the other ones for money. You can trade them in for money. So they wanted you to pick up 12. I'll probably have to turn in like eight or nine of the bones. And they'll give me a couple to, to sell off. That way it's worth it. I mean, I do get a reward. I get my Quicksilver like normal. And I get my other reward, my secondary reward. But you also get a little bit of cash because you can sell off those bones that are left over. Look at his, uh, his contact is out in the middle of nowhere, just walking around. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, they sit down in the middle of a storm. That works. Hey, Fuji. His name is Fuji, right? 
The Viking grunts a hello. They neither question who sent me nor offer an explanation for why they are out here alone. They do, however, seem to understand the nature of what I have brought them. All right, show the samples. Ensign Fuge, oh, okay, Fuge. Quietly runs a device across several of the samples, handling the remains with a profound respect. They return the bones and transmit the scan directly into my exosuit, ready to deliver to the Nexus. Oh, so I don't even have to give them any of the bones. Usually they tell you, oh man, that's a bad parking job. Yeah, usually they tell you, hey, look, you know, he's going to take away like four of the bones or whatever. No, I got to keep all the bones. So now we got to go sell those and make some money. So yeah, you can get some good amount of money. But first, we're going to go to the Nexus. We need to turn this baby in. And I'm just going to call it in. I'm too lazy to go find it again. I'm just going to call in the anomaly and I'll just fly in. There we go. So easy enough. Sean Murray completed it. And I mean, look at it, it was 113, that's 200, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1 million, 1 1.3, 1.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7-ish, 2.7 million right there. Plus, if you pick up any of the, uh, the storm crystals, you can sell those as well. I picked up, what, one? I picked up one storm crystal. That's another 120,000 for that. And I mean, you think with the trading variances in, in price, it'll probably be about 120 to $130,000 for that. Heck yeah. Making tons of money doing this. All right, we're going to complete the mission. And we got our Quicksilver and our repair kit. That's what we want. I love the repair kit because I've, I've been stacking them up every time I collect them. Boom. Okay, I got my stacks of repair kits. Just in case I find, because you can use these on broken starships. So if you find a starship that's crashed and broken, you can use these repair kits to fix it. Oh, it's going to be great. All right. So we've done all of that. Let's actually see what we got for Quicksilver items. So every, you know, once we've completed the percentage on them, so we're up to uh, tier one. We haven't even unlocked tier one yet, but we get exotic. You can be a uh, title exotic if you have Quicksilver, and these will probably be, be between 500 Quicksilver and 800 Quicksilver, usually. That's what the titles cost, but it might be more. It depends. It, I don't know the exact number, and so it might be a little bit pricier, but I'm thinking five to 800 Quicksilver, so we got plenty of, you know, I have 5,000. I got plenty to buy all of these, but we need to unlock them, so get out there, do your Quicksilver mission for the weekend, do your all of your, your Nexus modules because they add to the research progress. I'm going to start doing my Quicksilver stuff, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Me and Sean.